Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. The cold weather continues outside, so today I'm going to treat myself by working in the nice warm plant room. I'm going to start the indoor work by working on my hibiscus bonsai. It's starting to grow long and needs pruning. I'm trying to style this tree to get an umbrella style canopy, so if I hold my hand over it, maybe something kind of like that. I don't want too flat a canopy up top. Not as flat as maybe some of the ficus trees, but maybe a little more rounded or semicircular. That'll be the eventual goal. I'll rotate the tree around just so you can see where it's at right now. And then I'll start the pruning. So I'm always pruning to a leaf that faces outwards because at the base of each leaf there's a dormant bud and the new shoot will come out in the right direction to all fan out from the center of the tree. So I'll start here. Just pruning everything back. This pruning should always be done after a period of good growth. So the shoots should be extended so they have at least, you know, four to six pairs of leaves on them. You don't want to be pruning them all the time or the tree will get weak. So you've got to allow for that period of growth and then prune it back. So I'm just kind of giving it a light prune for now and then I may come in and prune some of the branches back further when I look at the uh, overall design of the tree or the silhouette or shape of it. I don't have a lot of branches growing in the middle of the tree. They're all kind of fanning outwards. But now that these outer branches are established, I'll allow more growth to come up in the center of the tree. And the reason I do this center growth last is because vertical branches thicken up the fastest. So all these shoots that I allow to grow in the middle will catch up in thickness with these outer branches very quickly. And then eventually I'll have a nice kind of uniform crown to the tree. I got one out the back here. That can be taken off too here. So that's kind of got all my uh, all my shoots pruned back. So now I'll come out front and have a look at the tree and decide what needs to be taken back further. I'm having a look at the tree from the front now. I think my apex up here could be reduced back just slightly. So that looks better. I think that branch at the back here, right here, that's getting too long. I need to reduce that back. The branches on the right hand side here, they're starting to get a little long and maybe uh, kind of shooting skyward. So I've got to prune those back. So that looks better. I've got that right hand side reduced quite a bit. There's one shoot at the back. I don't know if you can see it way back there. And from the front here, it looks too straight. It looks like a fairly new shoot that's grown. And then I pruned it once and the new growth came in almost directly in line with the old growth. So it's just looks like a big straight branch. So I've got to prune that back shorter to kind of get a change of direction. I'll rotate the tree around to the back. So this is that branch right here. You can see it comes off and it just grows straight. And the new shoot just continues that line. So I need to prune that back. There's a leaf coming here that would change the direction more towards the back of the tree. So I'll snip it off short to here like that. I'm just looking at the other part of this branch. It kind of divides into two at this point. And then this branch kind of is interfering with the one beside it. So I'd like to change the direction on that also. I'm going to take it off to off here like that. That gives that branch a little more room. There may be a shoot that develops in here that I can take it back further in the future. But for now, I think that's pretty good. This branch on the left hand side here, it has a lot going on at the tip. I hard pruned it back you know, fairly recently and it kind of exploded in growth at the tip. So I've got to go in and look at those new branches and pick the ones that I want to keep. 
I'll try and show you the structure of that branch. If I tilt the tree up and move this leaf out of the way, you can see the major branch comes off and then I've got a shoot here and another one here and then a major one at the tip. So I think one of those needs to be removed. I've got kind of two parallel branches here. So probably this one here. And I'm just gonna look at it from the front view. Yeah, I think, you know, that one's kind of shooting straight up anyway. So that one's gotta come off. Like that. Now, where it divides into two here, it divides into two again, and then I've gotta shorten that one a bit. So just to trim it back, and I'll do the same here. I'll trim this one back a bit too. There's some leaves facing a nice direction. So I'm just gonna clean out this one leaf here. It's an older leaf and this one down here. This tree had some white fly on it and I'm killing them all. Doesn't seem to have too many left, but occasionally you see one flying around. Okay, now this other branch, I've got one on the bottom here that's really weak. I'm going to get rid of that one because I'm just going to keep the two branches here. So that one's gone. And then I have a chance. I've got a leaf coming out the bottom here. So I could prune it off here and I would get growth that's more horizontal on this branch. So I'm going to do that. So pruning it back right to here, like that. I'll need to clean up the area where I prune this branch back just to make it look a little nicer in this area. I've got that area cleaned up now. You can see the one thick branch divides into two and it looks quite clean in that branch junction. This one branch that comes out forward, I don't want it to come out too far. So I've got a point up here where it divides into three. There's one branch that kind of comes straight forward to the viewer and then one that comes off to the left-hand side and one that comes off to the right. So I just want this branch dividing from one to two. So I am going to take it back. I'm going to remove that one pointing straight towards the viewer like that. And I think I've got this branch here and I've got another one here. So I could take off this portion that comes out the front. I'm just, yeah, I think that would be a good choice. So I'll take off this part of it to there, and then I'll shorten this to here. And that's got that kind of branch coming forward cleaned up. There's some stubs. I did some pruning last time and I've got some stubs that I can clean up here like that, just to make my cut points nice and smooth and flowing. I think I want to reduce the height of this one also, so I'm going to take it back to there. This branch coming out to the right-hand side, I've it divides into two at the tip, and then I've got this kind of vertical portion of it coming up here, and I have a leaf that fans out lower down, so I'm going to cut it back to here, removing that upright growth. And I think that's much better. There's a tip I can prune off here just to get some branch division. I've got two leaves that overlap here, so I'm going to take off the one that's in the shade. I'm going to take the tip off this branch. I've got two leaves that are nicely fanning out here, so I'll take off this part like that. And then I think I've got to get to this lower branch. It's starting to get quite long, so I've got to sort that out next. All right, I'll tackle this lowest branch now. And again, I'm looking for keeping it fairly compact, so I'll take the tip off here. I've got two nice leaves that fan out. And then this one coming out the back, I've got a leaf pointing straight up, I'll remove. There's another one here I can remove just so I can see the structure better. And then I'll take it back to here, to removing that branch tip. 
I've got a small branch on the underneath that I, I kept last time. I probably don't need it, but maybe I'll keep it still. And there's also one coming out the back here. I'm going to prune the vertical part of it off, so like that. Just to kind of keep that branch kind of low and coming out more horizontal in this direction. I've got a branch out the back here that's getting quite long and I'm, I'm thinking I probably should take it back shorter. At least to here. I'm wondering if I should even go shorter. I've got, I've got two branches here and this one's way more vigorous than the other one so I might want to balance them by there's another branch here so I could take the center one out and I think I'll do that so I'll take that one off right like that and then my branch divides from one to two and they're fanning outwards I'm just gonna remove a leaf here that's blocking some growth from happening there I've also got a branch in here I don't know if you can see it. This branch here, there's a small shoot and it runs parallel to this one. So I'm going to remove that. It's just cluttering up that area like that. So that looks better. I'm worried. I don't mind this being high because it's kind of the apex here, even though this is still going to be an umbrella style canopy. I'm just wondering if that's getting too high, that one over there. I think I'll leave it for now. Something may develop in this area and I can shorten that branch back. I think it's quite good for now. Here's a look at the hibiscus. It's all pruned up for today. I'll rotate it around so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. So I'll put it back on the bench and let it grow once again. I'll show you how much I pruned off of it. You can see it on the table down here. Quite a bit of branches and foliage. But I think once the tree fills in again, it's going to look really good. The next tree I'll be looking at today is my ponytail palm. Here's my ponytail palm. It's been growing well all winter. And today I'm just going to clean it up. I'll remove some of the lower leaves, some of the leaves that have died, and just do a general cleanup. My original intent with this tree was to make it a prisoner tree. If you've seen some of those baobab trees in Africa that are hollow inside and they have a doorway that leads to the interior of the tree. And that was my original intent and in I carved out a doorway in the tree here, if you can see it. Um, and it's really healed over really nicely. It's all rounded around. And I think I'm going to add my little doorway to it today. I think it would be kind of a cool feature on the tree. But first I'll start with all this cleanup work. I'll begin at the bottom of, you know, one of these trunks and I'll just pull off all the dried up leaves. This happens on older trees. As the branch grows, the leaves die off because they're no longer attached the same way they were when the branch was small and young. It kind of just naturally gets a little looser. So that's got the dead leaves off this trunk. And now I could also remove some of these lower leaves just to clean it up a bit. So I'll do that too. So you just grab the leaf and pull downwards like that. I'll remove some of these ones that are crossing on the inside here like that so that's kind of got that trunk line cleaned up now so i'll move on to the next one here and do the same thing remove all these dead lower leaves and then remove some of the lowest leaves just to expose the trunk a little more and then in the summer i'll be pruning this back so I'll be cutting into old wood. So 
If you see these trunks here, I'll probably cut somewhere around here and then that'll cause further subdividing to get a thicker and denser canopy on top. So I'll rotate it around now. We'll get these back trunks, which aren't as strong back here. Pulling off some of these lower leaves. You have to be careful. The edges of these leaves are like uh, miniature saw blades. So if you run your hand along them, they'll cut you. And that's just a natural defense mechanism of this plant. And a lot of, uh, a lot of plants shaped like this have sharp edges on them. I'm gonna remove this leaf coming towards the inside there. Okay, I'm just rotating it around. Move a few of these lowest leaves here. So you can see these back trunks aren't nearly as strong as the front two. So in the summer, I'll leave these alone and I'll prune only the front ones to kind of balance the vigor. I do have some previous stumps where I cut off the trunk and nothing grew out of it. So it's just a living stump there. That could be activated someday. So I'm going to leave them on the tree. It's time to work on the doorway of my prisoner tree. In, uh, it's rumored that some of the baobabs, they used to keep prisoners inside the uh, hollow tree and they would guard the door. I'm trying to think what I can use. Um, I could use metal mesh, but I don't think that would look very good. I think I'm going to use wood. So maybe popsicle sticks across the front and make sort of a little door out of it. I'll try that. I've got everything I need to make my door here. I've got popsicle sticks, a hobby knife, a pen, and some super glue. So these strips are going to be too thick to put across the door. So I'm going to, going to cut them in half. So I will use the one popsicle stick as a guide. I'll just kind of roughly cut this in half and it doesn't have to be exact. It's got to look like a rough door. Actually, I'm just going to do it by hand. Just cutting down the middle of the stick. It's supposed to look like, you know, something that was put together quickly. It doesn't have to look like a finished, finished lumber or anything. It's supposed to look quite natural just to make a temporary holding cell for prisoners. There we go. So that's a much better width to kind of have as my doorway. So I think I'll need uh, probably eight of them. There we go. Now, I think that's probably enough. And then I'll use these remaining ones as pieces that go across, I think. They'll probably need to be split in half too. So if that's the width of my door, that's plenty. And I'm only going to need about half of the height. So I probably made them a little long, maybe not. All right, I'll start with my cross braces. So I'm going to uh, cut these other ones in half and these will be my cross braces. So. Now, how wide is my doorway? It's that wide so I need to space them apart a little further there it does look a little close maybe like that then we'll do this across one up top maybe yeah the top's kind of uh, an arch so I think we just want the two, one at the bottom, one at the top, sort of, and then have the arch above. So, all right, I'm going to try gluing this up. I will just cut the end of this off. Using my perners, I think. 
That makes it a lot easier. And I've got to go the right width, so to about here. And I'll make them both about the same length. Like that. So one can go here and one up here. All right, I'll glue the lower one in place first. And I'm using super glue because I need a waterproof glue. All right, so I'll put a drop here, 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 here. And then I'll just lightly coat the back of this one. And I'll stick it down. Just like that. And I'll need to put a weight on to kind of clamp it all together. While that glue is drying, I will put on my next piece. Again, I'll just kind of dab glue on here. And I've kind of measured my height, so I think it's somewhere around here is where I want to put this other cross brace. And I'll put a weight on that. Like that. And let that dry. This planting is inspired by a picture inside Remarkable Trees of the World by Thomas Pakenham. And in here there's prisoners. And you can see there's a baobab tree that has a hole in it. And it's rumored that prisoners were kept inside this tree, the hollow trunk. So that kind of inspired me for this style of planting. I'll remove the weights now. We'll see if this all held together. Hopefully it did. Oh, okay. It's glued to the table. Like that, eh? Seems to be quite strong. Now, <laughs> I put this thing on the wrong side there. I think I'll have to add one to both sides. I think that'll make it stronger too. I'll do that. I'll, I'll add one to both sides. This is a prison after all, so I'm gonna make this pretty strong. Oh, I've got to put my glue down here too. Yeah, so we'll call this we'll call this planting the prisoner. It's not a baobab, but Kind of has that similar style being a ponytail palm. Okay. That should glue up really nicely. I'll put some weights on top of that and we'll let it dry. I've removed the weights and my gate. It's still a little sticky, but it's almost dry. I'm just going to try it in front of the door frame and see what it looks like. All right, so I'll place it up in front here. I think that's going to look quite good when I do a bit of trimming. I can cut out a bit of an arch up here. It would be really cool to have like a skeleton inside or something like that or I'll put something in there. Maybe some uh, something that looks like clothes or some little feature inside the doorway. I'm going to trace a kind of a rough outline of this arch up here. Um, so I think I want it kind of coming to a bit of a point. Yeah, so kind of up here to a point and then back down. I'll try that. I'll come in with my snippers, my branch pruners, and we'll just... I should go this direction to kind of make it an arch if I can. Maybe I can't do that. No, can't do that. I'll come in like this. <laughs> All right, here I go. One off. Another one off. There. The 
that looks quite good. It doesn't look too even. It looks just right. Let's see it in front of the doorway now. I think I'll have to trim the bottom off. Just get rid of all those sharp points. So I'll do that next. It's safety glasses in here with these pieces flying everywhere. That looks good. I like that. Let's see what it looks like now. I'm thinking on this doorway, to stop prisoners trying to squeeze out the top, I'm going to sharpen the tops of the sticks. So I think that'll look quite good. It'll make it look a little more deadly looking. So I'll get my X-Acto knife and I'll just do a bit of carving on the top. I'm just working away at the door. I'm, I think these are a little thick. My, uh, you know, my, what do you call those? My uprights. So I'm just, you know, coming in and carving them away, thinning them down a bit. And I think that'll look better. The glue's nice and dry now and it's really strong, this gate. I finished the carving on the gate. I think it's looking quite good. I removed the uh, slat at the back so the gate sits a little more vertical when it's in front of the doorway there. Kind of like that. And I don't think I need a hinge or anything on it. I think I'll just place it in the soil like that. And I think that's quite good. Let me move it over a little bit. And this will, you know, weather over the next few years and it'll look quite nice. And I'll definitely put someone inside there or something inside there for sure. That's all the work I'll be doing on my ponytail palm. That's inspired by the tree, the baobab tree in Remarkable Trees of the World. I'll put away the super glue and the popsicle sticks and I'll get out the next tree for today. Last winter I started a fiddle leaf ficus. I took a fairly large plant and I reduced it down and I root pruned it and it started to grow new little shoots out of it. It looked like it was doing well and then it just went downhill. It all suddenly died. So I got a new fiddle leaf fig and I'll show you it. It's a plant that's totally unsuitable for bonsai. It's got huge leaves. So I'll show you that now. Here's a look at my fiddle leaf ficus. It is just huge. And I'll show you the size of the trunk. So the leaves on it, if you see my hand, they're just huge. Like they're massive, the leaves. And the trunk size isn't all that big. Uh, if I bring the light down here. You can see the trunk down here. So it's about the size, you know, maybe of my middle finger in diameter. But it's getting a nice buttress root base on it. So I think it'll look quite nice in the future. I would get it out except the roots have grown down into the pot that's underneath and it's kind of rooted itself into there. So I'm going to leave it there until I bring it out for the summer. And then we'll do some root pruning and top pruning and get it underway as a bonsai. So even though it's totally unsuitable for bonsai with these giant leaves, I just love it. I'm, uh, I'm into large leaf bonsai. I'll keep growing it and uh, see what we can make of this tree. Uh, it, it won't be a conventional bonsai, but you know, it'll be a nice fiddle leaf ficus bonsai and it'll have huge leaves and I'll love it. The next update for today is my plumeria bonsai. I'm trying to see if I can create a tree-like form out of this plumeria. Um, I've done one chop here and it grew a new leader and I have a strong bud over this side so that might develop eventually. And then I chopped my leader and I got it to divide, to divide from one into two. And then it's got a whole bunch of buds up here so I'm hoping, you know, eventually it looks like a kind of gets a tree-like form. Uh, it didn't leaf out properly last summer. It just got a bunch of little starter leaves, but it never, you know, fully leafed out. So I'm hoping this year it does. I'll uh, give it really good light. When it warms up a little more, I'll put it out in the greenhouse, give it the heat and humidity and good light, and hopefully it'll leaf out for the summer. The next update is my Croton bonsai. And I had a larger one of these, but last fall it got too cold and it died. 
but the cutting survived. So this is just a cutting off my original one. And it's on a bit of a slope right now because it was reaching towards the light, but uh, we'll get it straightened up this summer. And it's growing really well. It's nice and colorful, all the leaves. Doing well, and I hope to turn it into a nice bonsai someday. The next update today is my Natal ficus. As you can see, it's grown really tall. It's almost up to the Canada arm here. Let's go in and have a closer look. My plan was to grow a new leader or a couple of leaders on this tree, and I'm doing it in this area. I've left these shoots to grow, and you can see it's blending in quite nicely. This tree had a big chop here, so I'm trying to regrow it to make it look like a, you know, a fairly natural looking tree. And yeah, it's, it's doing really well. Um, this junction is, you know, it's still got a long way to go, but it's starting to blend in partially. So I think, you know, if I keep growing these leaders, I think eventually I'll get a fairly normal looking tree out of this. The Natal ficus is in a growing phase. I'm just going to continue to grow those leaders. And the rest of it hasn't grown a whole lot. All the energy's gone into those leaders. So I don't need to do any pruning today. I'll just let it continue to grow. My last update for today is my large jade cutting. It's growing really well. I have two cuttings that I took off of it and I'll plant those in the background today to kind of make a forest. I've got the two cuttings and I'm just trying to decide where to plant them. I've got sort of a tall one that could go in there maybe and another short one that could go back here. These cuttings were just kind of sitting in the pot and you can see they've rooted already on the side here. So I thought I'd better get them planted. It's been quite a while since I uh, cut these cuttings off of the main tree. I'll start by making the cuttings a little lighter. They're kind of top heavy. So I'll just do a little pruning to them. Cutting them back, getting some of that weight off the top. Sort of like that, I think. Actually, I'm going to take this back even further to there. So it has a little bit of foliage, not much. So that's ready for planting. And then my other one, I'll just take some of the weight off the top here. There's those roots that have formed on it. And I think that one's ready for planting also. This cutting is off my Christmas cactus. So I'll have to plant that soon. It's dried out and it's just perfect for planting now. To plant these cuttings, I'll make a hole with my root rake just in the soil. And then I can place the cutting in there and I'm not sure how I want to put it yet. Um, what orientation I want. Maybe something like that. I'll plant it fairly deep because I I do want it to stay upright. I'll see how that looks. Yeah, that looks fine. And then I'll put my smaller one. I'm going to plant that over here in the corner. And I'll put that in the soil like that. This soil is really dry and I've been keeping it on the dry side because it's quite humid in the plant room. So if you water these uh, jades too much, they'll start rotting. So I try and just kind of mist them lightly instead of watering them thoroughly. I'll give it a light misting now. So here I go. This is rainwater. Mist my new, newly planted ones also. And just the surface of the soil a bit. You don't want too much water, just enough to keep them nice and healthy. Just like that. And if you do that about once every day, they should grow really nicely. I've got a nice Japanese pot to place my Christmas cactus cutting in. So I'll just get it into the soil. This is dry bonsai soil. And again, I'll plant it fairly deeply. So I get it in there. That 
that's a good height. And this soil is quite dry, so I will mist it also. All right, I'll mist the cutting. Not wetting the soil, but just getting some moisture into it, about that much. Miss the rest of the cutting. And I'll do that once a day and hopefully it'll grow. The parent tree to the cutting is doing really well. All the new growth is coming in up top. I gave it quite a pruning last time. And this is the new kind of chosen front. So it's looking pretty good. I'll give that a misting too. Just like that. I'll finish with today's update and that's my ficus elastica bone size. And you can see that the main tree, which all these other ones are cuttings off of it, is dividing quite nicely. I'm getting some nice branching on it. So it'll become a nice bonsai tree in the future. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>